thank you. Our distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen, buenos dias. Good morning. The last quarter of 2005 brought an alarming signal among unauthorized users of Microsoft products. Many of the ICT schools and owners of IT businesses in the region were in panic because accordingly, there were government authorized law enforcers who were tasked to run after computer laboratories, internet cafes, offices which are using unlicensed software. This alarming information, whether it is true or not, made us realize two things. First, it is unlawful to use pirated software products, and second, it gave us the opportunity to venture into an idea of using free open soft source software. The former cost much to own or subscribe one, while the later costs nothing and does not provide the basic OSS FS rights to examine, modify, and redistribute the program's source code. Let me just tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that lately, companies have been paying more attention to open source. Ten years ago, there seemed to be a real danger. Microsoft would extend its monopoly to servers. It seems safe to say now that open source has prevented that. A recent survey found that 52% of companies are replacing Windows servers with Linux servers. With this trend in the industry, I believe this is the right time for us to build at critical mass to answer the needs and demands of our market. In fact, one of the programs of the Commission on Higher Education is to make the academic curriculum responsive to the needs of the industry. With this training, I hope that we can develop new breed of technical experts to fill the gap between the academe and the industry in the use of free open source software. Before I end, let me thank the organizers and sponsors for making this training possible in this region and for the participants. I wish you all the best in absorbing everything from our technically equipped speakers. Again, I would welcome you all to this two-day FOSS training workshop. Muchisimas gracias, and we hope to have a productive day ahead of us. Again, welcome and good day to everyone. Sorry for that. Thank you so much, Dr. Yang, at this very point. Ladies and gentlemen, with the much to do, I'll turn it over to my co-host, Ms. Maida Lata, for the introduction of the keynote addresses. We'll be hearing five keynote addresses from our five distinguished guests. Ms. Spines? Thank you, Mom Marge. Our first keynote speaker for the day is a consistent honor student when she was still in her school days. In fact, she graduated magna cum laude at Western Mindanao State University with a degree in Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. She has earned academic units in MS in Math, Master of Science in Management Engineering from Adamson University. She has also earned units in Master of Science in Chemistry from the University of Santo Tomas. In 1990, she finished her Master of Science in Environmental Engineering from the Asian Institute of Technology in Bangkok, Thailand. And presently, she is a visiting associate professor of the Environmental Engineering Graduate Program of the Western Mindanao State University. She is also the current chairperson of the Regional Information Technology and, Ele and Electronic Commerce Committee, or what we call the RIPECC of the RDC, or the Regional Development Council. She has also championed the uh, advancement of information and communications technology and internet access in the region. 
Our speaker has also attended various international and local training programs and symposia on management, information technology, energy, and technology transfer. At present, she sits as a trustee to four state colleges in the region and at the Ateneo de Zamboanga University. Awarded as the as most outstanding alumni by the Western Mindanao State University, also awarded as model employee, and awarded as Asian Institute of Technology's Distinguished Alumni Award. Ladies and gentlemen, here to talk about free open source software and research, please help me welcome the Regional Director of the Department of Science and Technology 9, Ms. Brenda Nazareth L. Manzan. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. I was getting worried that your introduction would even be longer than my speech. Um, I think um, March is indeed Women's Month. I know there that all your keynote speakers for this morning are women. Mabuhay ang mga mujeres de Zamboanga. Okay, um, the distinguished guests, uh, my good friends there, uh, Director Yanga, Director Tess, Shell, and Director Mao, um, colleagues in government service, friends from the private sector, students, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant morning to all. I am very pleased to join you this morning for this very important conference on free open source software. At the outset, I must congratulate the organizers for convening this conference here in Zamboanga City. The open source methodology represents a radical change from the commercial software world. In a sense, it is the software development process going back to its roots when software code was developed cooperatively and freely shared for the benefit of all. The benefits of open source software are, are well known and go beyond the obvious cost advantages over commercial alternatives. The benefits such as security, stability, and low hardware requirements are especially applicable for developing countries like the Philippines. In the Department of Science and Technology, we have a research and development institute called the Advanced Science and Technology Institute, or ASTI, whose main mandate is to conduct research and development in the field of information and communications technology and microelectronics. ASTI is considered as one of the leaders of open source software development in the country and an early adapter of uh, open source. The institute has a software group which develops open source applications and desktop distribution. This group also explores the different environments which can run Linux from embedded devices, server-based computing, up to distinguished, up to distributed clusters of computers. All of ASTIS servers, especially those connected to the internet, also use open source software. To the students who are around, I think you must have heard of Bayanihan Linux. Who has heard of Bayanihan Linux? No, I? I you know? Bayanihan Linux. Okay. Anyway, Bayanihan Linux is uh, ASTIS main open source related project. The word, I think you know what Bayanihan means. No? It's, um, it refers to an old custom of Filipinos, of villagers helping each other in moving their hut from one place to another. And the meaning, the, the, the meaning of that Bayanihan has since expanded to include any activity where people help each other out. So Bayanihan Linux is based on Red Hat distribution with the kernel replaced with the latest stable version. 
the whole distribution fits only in one compact disc and comes with a very easy to install process. Very easy to install, I don't know, some may disagree. The target users for the distribution are government offices, schools, and small to medium enterprises. Since the basic computing needs of this target population are well known, the distribution includes all the essential software that they will need in their day-to-day -day tasks, such as word processing, spreadsheets, presentations, email, web browsing, printing, and multimedia playback. The version 1 of Bayanihan Linux was released last June 2002, followed by versions 2 and 3 last January and November 2003, respectively. The latest version, version 3.1, was released last September 2004. Bayanihan Linux is the operating system in PLDT's um, Cyber Madness People's PC Promotion, as well as in some departments of the University of, University of the Philippines system. In September last year, our very own uh, regional office of the Department of Science and Technology migrated almost all of, of its uh, workstations to Bayanihan Linux. Certainly, uh, it wasn't an easy job. It wasn't easy to migrate to a different uh, software. But it's not impossible. That's the, the, the key there. Another open source project of ASTI is the use of server-based computing environments such as Linux Terminal Services, or the LPS. With this environment, older PCs are used to interact with fully graphical applications running on a remote server. LPS solutions have been deployed to several elementary and high schools in, co in coordination with our Science and Education Institute and the Veritas Parochial School System. The system has also set up is also has also been set up at UP's Computer Science Department and the various government agencies. Through the Broadband Philippine Research, Education, and Government Information Network, or, or PREGINET, ASTI has established an open source based digital library platform. This digital library system is intended to build up local content of educational institutions as a collaborative research and development tool. The target, targeted initial content are theses, dissertation, and journal publications. ASTI has also created several government information systems using open source software, such as personal management, inventory management, project management, document tracking system, web email, and knowledge management system. Another significant research is the Bayanihan Bluetooth Developers Toolkit, or better known as BBT DPK. This is made up of both hardware and software components customized to be a complete and integrated solution that will serve as a platform for Bluetooth development. The Institute has also developed a software in networking in network monitoring and traffic engineering as well as in Wi-Fi. So free and open source software is already making inroads in the Philippine information technology industry. However, there are certainly some challenges that are currently hindering it from achieving its full potentials and benefits. Among the major challenges that need to be addressed are lack of appreciation and advocacy, the scarcity of people's competence in both technical and business subjects, the PC penetration and proper policy environment for open source software. I am confident that with institutions such as the E-World Career Center Corporation, the Universidad de Zamboanga, Aptec Computer Education, E-Learning Center, Net Access, and other organizers of this conference, we can surmount even at least the very basic challenge on advocacy and appreciation of open source. It is therefore my fervent hope that we make the most out of this activity.
educating ourselves and enhancing the skills that we have in the field of ICT will surely help us reap significant economic benefits in the coming years. Thank you very much and good day. Brenda for that um, enlightenment on the status of FOSS. Actually, free open source software, we usually term it as FOSS, kasi masyado mahaba. So, thank you very much. We were indeed enlightened. Actually, a while ago, my co-MC just whispered to me, and she said that the next speaker would like to be introduced modestly. So, I will do away with my three paragraphs of introduction that we prepared for her. Three paragraphs of experience, okay? So anyway, our next speaker is the active head behind the Field Operations Office of the National Computer Center. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, help me welcome the President, I'm sorry for that, the Center Director of the E-Governance Center of Excellence. Let us all welcome Ms. Maria Teresa M. Kamba. Madam Salamat for the very short introduction. Actually, I gave that instruction because I was going to use my time for the presentation. Um, let me start by congratulating the organizers for this very well attended event. I think that this is very timely and very important as this would help increase the appreciation and awareness of the people of Sambuanga on the use of free and open source software. Can I have my presentation please? The National Computer Center has been advocating for the use of open source software since the early 2000s. In fact, we have a lot of projects using open source software. on two things. The first one is what is the Commission on ICT stand on the use of open source software. And the next one will cover the various projects that we have in government which makes use of this particular technology. And then later on towards the end of my presentation I will be sharing with you a short video, a three minute video of a uh, a com the combined initiative of ASTI, of the Department of Science and Technology, which Director Brenda has uh, shared with you earlier, which is the Pioneer Hand Linux, and also our own initiative uh, of deploying computers with open source software in local government units. This is the Community E-Center initiative of uh, the National Computer Center and the Commission on ICT. For your information, the Commission on ICT, probably uh, you don't know about this organization uh, pretty well uh, right now, because this is a very new organization. This has been created just two years ago. We will mark our second anniversary on March 23. So, magto two years pa lang ang CICT. But the offices which have been transferred to the Commission on ICT, the offices which compose the Commission on ICT are there, have been there for a long, long time already, such as the National Computer Center and the Telecommunications Office. While the Commission on ICT has continuously advocated for the use of open source, it has not yet issued any policy or directive to government agencies to use this particular technology. Our stand, the stand of the CICT, is leave it to the agency to decide which particular technology it will use in, in its organization. So basically, agency uh, or the user should decide what option it should take. But also considering that the agency will not violate any intellectual property rights. Next. Now the major open source government initiative today in the government 
is the Jumpstart in Electronic Governance in Local Government Units, or the ELGU project. This is uh, implemented by, being implemented by the Field Operations Office of the National Computer Center. We were able to access funds from the e-government fund, but uh, initially this was supported by the Department of Science and Technology. Now, among the more than 20 e-government projects funded under the e-government fund, this is the only one that is making use of open source software. We are, we have 370 uh, beneficiaries right now, and all of these are local government units. So, all over the country, this is actually a nationwide project. So among the applications developed under this particular project are the real property tax system, business permits and licensing system, treasury operations and management system, and treasury operations and management system rather. Now these systems are all web, text, and GIS enabled, and all of these were developed using open source software. Now, the other initiative uh, of the National Computer Center is uh, the establishment of web presence of all local government units and government agencies. Now, we were able to, to establish a 100% web presence for all local government units because of the website content management system that has been used to easily develop these websites. Now again, this website content, uh, content management system template developed by NCC has made use of open source software. At present, we have two versions, the, the template for uh, the static website as well as the, the other version is the template for the interactive website. 99% of our local government units, there are 1,694 LGUs, and 99% of them make use of this system. So this also makes pos possible uh, the same look and feel for all local government uh, units' websites. Now the other initiative of NCC is this establishment of the e-governance center of Excellence. This is actually a collaborative effort between the private and the government sector. Among our partners here are Intel, Red Hat, HP, and Oracle. Now, this center is a venue for showcasing best practices, ICT solutions, and architecture, as well as e-government applications. This center is located at our new Pidiliman uh, at the NCC building in UP Liman campus. Now the other one is the community e-center project. Now we are establishing 100 community e-centers nationwide and we are deploying computers to remote uh, localities uh, for, for, the, for these localities to have internet access points. Again, the computers that we're deploying make use of open source software. Now these community e-centers are internet access points and very recently in Region 9, we have just launched the one in Bayog, Sambanga del Sur, uh, in Siayan, Sambanga del Norte. We also have one in CI, Mabuhay, Labason, uh, Katipunan, and Rojas. So there are already six uh, community e centers in Region 9, and we will be establishing two more within this semester. Okay, the National Computer Institute, which is the training arm of the National Computer Center, has been offering training programs on open source software. Now, NCC's Field Operations Office, which is based in Luzon, uh, offices which are which are based in Luzon, Cebu, and here in Zamboanga are also offering uh, training programs on open source, particularly Linux and uh, MySQL. Our main target participants are the uh, are the 
government employees coming from the local government units. We are building their capability uh, on the use and operation of the application systems that we have developed using open source. So let me just conclude by saying that open source in the government is still in its infancy, but it is fast gaining momentum already. And with the collaborative effort of the government and the private sector, as well as the educational institutions, we can make a go of the use of open source in the country. So for now, we will uh, just witness a short video presentation on uh, the Community East Center Initiative of the National Computer Center, as well as the Bayanihan Linux Initiative of the Department of Science and Technology. Maraming salamat. informative video and we would also like to thank um, Mark Kamba for sharing with us the contribution of FOSS or the free and open source software in the government. We are now going to proceed with our next speaker. Our next speaker for the day finished Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering from Mapua Institute of Technology. She earned her Master of Information and Communication Technology from Griffith University, Australia. And presently, she is an assistant professor and the department head of computer science and computer engineering department at the Western Mindanao State University. She has worked with 
Queensland Institute of Business Technology as part-time lecturer. Queensland, by the way, is located in Australia also. She has been a resource speaker at several seminars and participated in both national and international trainings. Our speaker is also a proficient researcher. She is a member of a research team project known as Global Engineering and Manufacturing in Enterprise Networks. And she also held the position of research assistant at the Women in Information Technology at Griffith University in Australia. She was awarded the plaque of recognition for academic excellence by Western Mindanao State University. At the same time, she is also a recipient of the Griffith University Award for Academic Excellence. She holds the position of President for the Council of the Deans and Heads for ICT in Region 9 and the Vice President for External Affairs for Philippine Society for IT Educators in the Region. Here to talk about free and open source software in education, and I'm proud to say she is one of the greatest mentors I've had in college. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the President for the Council of the Deans and Heads for ICT in Region 9, Ms. Shalito Conti Oligario. Uh, I'd love to give you plus points right now, but you're beyond my reach now. But thank you for the very uh, generous introduction. Uh, Dr. Brenda Nazareth, Director Tess Kamba, my very good friend Maureen, Dr. Garcia of the Shed, Ingrid Montano, Mr. Sunny Liu of the UZ. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Buenos dias and welcome to Sambuanga for those who are not from here. We are living in a time of unprecedented change. Everybody knows that. Almost all aspects of society have metamorphosed because of the advent of IT. Advances in information and communication technology, without a doubt, have had a tremendous impact on almost all aspects of our daily lives. While offering tremendous benefits and opportunities for growth and development, ICT, as we all know, has also posted challenges as a result of the need to adapt to the changes it has brought about. The field of education, above all, has had to face multiple challenges in the course of harnessing these capabilities so that we will be able to create new opportunities for learning and to upgrade the level of achievement that our students can have in terms of creative and critical thinking through the use of applied technologies. The main challenge as we in the educators, education, and by education sector know is for tertiary institutions to be able to respond relevantly and intelligently to what is needed in our community. Things are changing quickly and we need to be responsive to these changes. However, in implementing this technology, we need to consider it in the context of changes in our society, the concerns of intellectual property and copyright, and the very nature of the technology that we use. The challenge to us in the academia is how to address this challenge in a timely, cost-efficient manner wherein we are able to provide this relevant and intelligent response to what is needed, truly needed, in our community. George Simons, in his article, Open Source Content in Education, asserts that to be able to address this challenge, this response should be learning about object-based, individualized education based on the needs of the marketplace we serve. 
and this is not possible for any individual institution without collaboration with peers. The academe looking for new models of teaching and learning have been working towards this ideal for a long time. Without the need for any profit motive, teachers have long known that the best methods of teaching are only made possible, are only made better through collaboration. Open source content development is the model to ensure that tertiary education meets the needs of its market in an affordable way. Among the many touted benefits according to the Open Source Conference in Europe in 2005 is that uh, open source is said to provide better quality software, increase pedagogic choice, enhance flexibility, and gives rise to new business and social models. Further, what is exciting about open source is that it extends to other areas, including the production of e-learning materials, as evidenced by the many websites catering to the development of courseware using open source software. Pioneering this effort is MIT's courseware site. Locally, we have universities and colleges employing OSS to support their courseware sites. Across the globe, countries, even the developed ones, are looking at open source as a viable alternative to implementing ap applications in the academe. The attractiveness of open source becomes magnified because, as uh, has been said, it promotes lower total cost of ownership. Let me cite you an example of an open source deployment in South Africa. Andy Rabagliati, one of the pioneers of this open source deployment in Cape Town, Africa, says it best. At the end of the day, it's about money because we are in Africa. Whether we are in Africa or in Asia and in much of the world, especially in the developing nations, open source is looking like the best way to usher in the information age. He asserts that money, flexibility, and independence from proprietary software are a powerful combination. Open source encourages greater learning of concepts rather than products. Unfortunately, we are in a situation wherein proprietary software has become the default standard everywhere. People are unwilling to learn how to use alternative products because it's not what you'll need to know in business. Businesses are unwilling to change to alternative products because they'll have to face retraining costs. So what then is the responsibility of the academe? This means that schools should have lesser emphasis on teaching how to use certain products and concentrate more on teaching them about the basic concepts behind the use of these products. With the power of open sourceware, we enable our students to become creators instead of users. Students are given the opportunity to examine the inner workings of a software with the open source code and extend the functions limited only by their vision and their imagination. Other benefits as we have seen in the different slides show that this will mean lower costs for your own home systems and it works well with older hardware. This means savings that can be allotted for other much-needed educational resources like books, computers, and all the other uh, things needed for you to get value education. Among the many popular open source technologies relevant for the academe would be, of course, Linux and its many uh, derivatives like the Bayanian Linux of DOST. Ubuntu, which is one of the major sponsors of this event. Also, one of the more popular applications would be Moodle, uh, which we use in Wemsu for the courseware websites. And if you just try to search the net, there are so many websites that contain links to various e-learning materials covering almost all subjects. These are not limited to IT. Risk factors, these are this one consideration we have to look at. 
Well, this may all seem like an answer to our call our prayers, especially for those of us with limited budgets. One of the forerunners in advocating Linux in education recognizes the potential problems. One well-recognized problem is that there is the paucity of documentation, the lack of documentation on installing, configuring, and using Linux in most applications. One major need for Linux to be a viable option in most schools is quality user support groups. Not only those found in the web via mailing lists, news groups, and web forums. What we need is local user support. The Linux in Education organization is working towards the creation of these Linux user groups around the world. As with any major undertaking, a school intending to migrate to open source has to carefully plan the steps it's going to take in the migration. It's not just a one-day thing when you say, we don't have licenses, let's shift to open source. All stakeholder groups, the administration, the faculty, the students, have to be consulted and considered. They must ensure that the migration is gradual and that the stakeholders are aware and more importantly, ready for open source. There must be risk planning and management at all le levels of the migration process. Only when there is careful planning and a realistic assessment and how to manage them can administrative and all those other benefits that we say and associate with open source be fully realized. In conclusion, we do not deny that open source has enormous potential in the educational sector, but it has to address educating or education first. I would like to read to you a quote that I found at edgeop.org, which advocates open source in education. We are into the beginnings of the information age. It stands to affect the people of the world, at least as profoundly as the industrial age. Teaching our children to be passive purchasers of closed proprietary solutions to problems is not enough. Constraining our students to move the mouse within the confines of the instruction set of a few closed proprietary programs merely cages them and constrains our very own future. Indeed, the statements are profound. In the end, however, it still boils down to what are the pressing needs of the, of the community and how capable is the academe in meeting these needs. Open source where undoubtedly is a viable option, but only after considerable preparation and training to establish the readiness of the university. Thank you very much.